The final year of the Clone Wars was dominated by the Outer Rim sieges, a six-month string of Republic campaigns against the Separatist remaining strongholds. But even as the Grand Army of the Republic poured into the Rim to reclaim the Confederacy's core territories, a handful of battles were fought closer to home back in the Republic core. The last and most notable of these was the Battle of Ketanamoidia, a push to conquer the Trade Federation's greatest purse world. In this video, we'll be telling the full story of this campaign. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Nemoidia was the nominal headquarters of the Trade Federation and the homeworld of the Nemoidian species, but after they came of age, few Nemoidians ever returned there if they could help it. Nemoidia served only as a breeding ground and the symbolic capital of Nemoidian civilization. The true powerhouses in Nemoidian space were its purse worlds. The Nemoidian purse worlds were the earliest Nemoidian colonies, planets that, in ancient times, became so wealthy and powerful that they made colonies of their own. Three of the purse worlds are known, Deconomoria, Korunomoria, and the most prestigious of all, Ketonomoria. The purse worlds were aptly named. Only the wealthiest and most influential Nemoidians were allowed to live on those planets, which were dotted with the fortresses and vast personal vaults of the most successful Nemoidians. Catanamordia was even wealthier than its contemporaries. The houses of its stunning bridge cities were gilded with precious metals, and the countryside estates of its ruling elites were even more opulent. One such estate was a heavily defended citadel belonging to Newt Gunray, Viceroy of the Trade Federation. Though the Trade Federation was formally headquartered on Nemoidia, its true base of power was Katanamoidia, where most of its executives lived and hoarded their wealth. With this in mind, it should come as a shock to no one that Katanamoidia, along with Nemoidia proper and other purse worlds, seceded at the start of the Clone Wars. The Nemoidian worlds posed a serious threat to the Republic throughout the Clone Wars. They composed two enclaves of separatist space in the heart of the Republic's core territories and were heavily defended. For most of the war, the Republic simply didn't have the strength to capture the Nemordian worlds. For over two years, their solution was instead to blockade the Nemordian enclaves, establishing huge naval cordons around the two regions. This stalemate lasted until the war's final year, when the Republic began a campaign against separatist holdings in the core and colonies. Initially, this campaign was a reaction to Operation Dirge's Lance, aimed at recapturing Duro and the other Loyalist core worlds that General Grievous had conquered. But in late 20 BBY, the scope of the core counteroffensive grew to encompass the Separatist enclaves. One by one, the Separatist strongholds in the core and colonies were conquered by the Republic. In response to this campaign, Grievous recalled the bulk of his forces to defend the Outer Rim, and the Republic pursued them, beginning the Outer Rim sieges. At the same time, however, they had business to finish in the core. In 19 BBY, as battle raged on Deconomoria and Coronomoria, the Republic set its sights on Catonomoria. At this time, the Separatist Council was retreating to the Rim to rendezvous with Grievous, all except Gunray and his aides, who went first to Catonomoria. Gunray, being Gunray, wanted to rescue as many treasures from his citadel as he could before the Republic captured it. When Republic leadership learned of this, an attack on Catonomoria became inevitable. To lead the assault, two of the Jedi Order's brightest stars were recalled from the Outer Rim sieges, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Catonomoria was well defended. The Trade Federation had a massive droid army on the surface, complete with droidikas, STAPs, corporate alliance, tank droids, crab droids, and dwarf spider droids. In orbit, a war fleet of munificent class star frigates, Providence class carrier destroyers, and Lucra class battleships waited, including vessels from Gunray's personal fleet. Cannonamordia also hosted several of the Nemordian home defense legions and gunnery battalions, armies of fierce Nemordian soldiers dedicated to the defense of their wealth and homes. Of course, the Republic was willing to commit to the battle as well. Kenobi and Skywalker enlisted Commander Jen Dodner to lead their fleet of Venator-class Star Destroyers, spearheaded by the Integrity, Kenobi and Skywalker's shared flagship, and the flagship of the Open Circle Armada. Parts of the Republic force were commanded by Kit Fisto and two other Jedi, possibly Plo Koon and Feroda, based on their involvement in the later stages of the campaign. 
Clone officers Cody, Davis, and Rex played roles in the battle as well. Many clone units fought there, almost all drawn from Kenobi's third system's army, with the most notable being the 442nd Siege Battalion. As Dodonna engaged the Separatist Armada in Catanamordia's upper atmosphere, Republic forces launched a full-scale planetary invasion of Catanamordia. The Jedi Generals and their clone troopers were dispatched to key locations across the planet, with Kenobi and Skywalker landing near Gunray Citadel in the planet's western hemisphere. They began their assault with a protracted bombardment of the fortress, bringing in bombers and SPHAT artillery for the job. But this did little good. The Citadel's defensive shields held, while the fortress's defensive turbo laser batteries returned fire. Knowing it was only a matter of time before Gunray fled the planet, Kenobi and Skywalker opted to infiltrate the Citadel instead of waiting for the shield to fall. As the SPHATs kept up the bombardment, Kenobi, Skywalker, Commander Cody, and the Elite Squad 7 snuck in through the fungus farms in the Citadel's basement. From there, the group split up, with Kenobi, Cody, and Squad 7 engaging Gunray's droid guards and Skywalker making a beeline for the Viceroy. However, complications arose when Kenobi accidentally inhaled hallucinogenic fungal spores during a firefight in a storage wing. On a request from Cody, Skywalker circled back to assist Squad 7, returning to find Kenobi tripping balls but still fighting. Cody later commented that the spores had allowed Kenobi to unlock his true potential as a Jedi, as the Mad Lad managed to destroy a total of 50 droids while high on Nemordian shrooms. That, for the record, was the business on Kato Nemordia that didn't count. Due to Obi-Wan's little episode, Newt Gunray and his lieutenant, Rune Hako, escaped Katanamoria, albeit by the skin of their teeth. However, the mission to storm their citadel wasn't entirely in vain. Shortly after Gunray's escape and the citadel's subsequent capture, Republic forces discovered that the Nemordians had been forced to leave plenty of goodies behind. Among them was Gunray's Mechno Chair, a gift from Darth Sidious. The chair still contained a recording of a message from Sidious, which the Jedi used in a bid to track down the elusive Sith Master, who they weren't even sure existed until then. Catanamordia was formally captured by the Republic soon after Gunray's escape, but pockets of resistance remained. The tattered remains of the Trade Federation fleet continued to fight, while on the surface, many of the bridge cities refused to surrender. Kenobi, Skywalker, and much of the Republic invasion force were called back to the Outer Rim sieges after Gunray's escape, but the rest stayed back to mop up operations. During this part of the Battle of Katanamordia, sometimes classified as a separate battle, Republic forces were led by Jedi Masters Plo Koon, Feroda, and Denia. Also present were the Force-sensitive troopers X-1 and X-2. With Gunray and Harko gone, the defense of the Katanamordian holdouts fell to center Peth Findos, a high-ranking lieutenant of Gunray's. Not much is known about the campaign against the Katanamordian holdouts, aside from the fact that the Republic steadily made progress in the battle for the bridge cities. Toward the end of the battle, Order 66 was issued, and Generals Kuhn and Feroda were slain. Not long after this, the droid army was shut down, and across most of the galaxy, the Clone Wars came to an end. Katanamordia was conquered by the Republic-turned-Empire and subjected to martial law. Sentepeth Findos, the last commander of the Separatist forces on Katanamordia, fled back to Namordia, despite the fact that the planet had already been conquered. There, he was named the acting viceroy of the Trade Federation due to the disappearance of Newt Gunray and Rune Hako. Findos resisted the Empire for a hot minute before stormtroopers persuaded him to sign a treaty a few days after the war's end, which ceded all of the Trade Federation's assets to the Empire. The Trade Federation was nationalized and then liquidated by the Imperial regime. The Nemoidians, it turns out, had some backbone after all. It just took the threat of conquest to reveal it. But what do you think? Did that business on Katanamoidia count or not? Free to post your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.